Hi everyone, this is How to Steal a Dog, Chapter 17. Bear with me, I'm trying something new. This is probably my third take, so let's hope it works. But I miss you guys. I knew my day was going to be bad when Kirby Price called me a dirtbag in gym and everybody laughed. Even Luann, I saw her. And then it got worse. When Mama got off work that night, the car, the car wouldn't start. She turned the key and there was just one little click and then nothing. Well, that's just great, she said, pounding her fist on the steering wheel. Me and Toby looked at each other, but we both knew better than to say anything. She turned the key again, click. She flopped back against the seat and said a cuss word. Toby giggled and I poked him to be quiet. My life just goes from bad to worse, Mama said. And she sat there staring out the window at the Chinese restaurant across the street. A family came out. A real family, a mom, a dad, and two kids. They broke open their fortune cookies and read their fortunes out loud while they walked to their car. They all smiled and laughed and acted like they had the best life in the world. When they drove by us, they were still laughing. They didn't even look at us sitting in a car that wouldn't start. I wished I was one of those kids eating a fortune cookie and laughing with my family. Mama turned the key again. Click! I stared out the window, praying that the old car would start, and then I couldn't hardly believe my eyes. There was Mookie, pedaling his bike up the road toward us. I ducked down real quick and motioned for Toby to get down, too. Naturally, he said he had to go, what? I And sit there, looking stupid. I grabbed his t-shirt and yanked him down. Then I peeked out the window, and Mookie had gone on past us and disappeared around the corner. Mama turned the key again. Click! I finally got up the courage to say, what are we gonna, I'm oh, sorry, what are we gonna do now? I held my breath, hoping she wasn't going to yell at me, because I didn't need that after the dirt bag stuff at school. Mama shook her head and let out a big whoosh of sigh that blew her hair up off her forehead. She turned the key again, click. I guess we're sleeping here tonight, she said. I looked around us at all at all the places where there were people who would see us. The Chinese restaurant, the Quickie Mart, the Chevron gas station. What if somebody sees us, I said. You all go on over there to the gas station and wash up, Mama said. I'm going to the Quickie Mart to get us something to eat. I watched her run across the street in her jeans dragging on the ground. What if somebody sees us, I hollered out the window, but Mama didn't even turn around. The next morning, Mama walked over to the coffee shop to get her friend Patsy's to drive me and Toby to school. I like to have died when I saw Patsy pull up beside our car, roll down the window and say, come on, y'all. She had a big poofy hairdo that stuck way up on top of her head with an ugly sparkling earrings and a cigarette hanging out of her red lips. Her car was rustier than ours with a bumper stickers all over the back. My other car is a broom. Honk if you love Jesus. Stuff like that. I climbed into the back seat and slouched down as low as I could. Please don't let anybody see me, I prayed, especially Kirby Price. Just before we got to school, Patsy said, Look at that. Me and Toby looked where he, she was pointing. There was Mookie pedaling along the side of the road on a rusty old bike of his, the little American flag waving in the breeze. I've seen that man all over town, Patsy said. He sure looks happy, don't he? I slouched back down in my seat and turned my face away from the window. I sure wished Mookie would skip on out of Darby instead of hanging around like he was. Imagine being that happy when all you got in the whole world is a beatable bicycle, Patsy said. When he passed when we passed him, she waved out the window and said, Hey Mookie tipped his hat. After school Toby had to walk back to the car. It Toby and me and Toby had to walk back to the car. It took forever. Toby kept griping and hollering, Wait up, Georgina Then he kept asking, When are we gonna take Willie back to Carmela's? I pretended like I didn't hear him. Finally he grabbed my backpack and yanked it. I said, When are we gonna take Willie back to Carmela's? 
I whirled around and faced him. I don't know, Toby, okay? I started off in the sidewalk again, and Toby trotted along beside me. She's looking for him, Georgina, he said. I know. I bet Willie wants to go home. I know. Maybe Carmilla has some money now. Maybe Gertie gave her some. I stopped. Look, Toby, I said. I've got to figure this thing out. We went to all the trouble to steal that dog, so we might as well get some money out of it, right? Toby shrugged. I guess. What do you mean, you guess? I said. That's the whole reason we got ourselves into this mess in the first place. What mess? I started walking again, but Toby grabbed my arm. What mess, Georgina? He said. Are we in trouble? No, we're not in trouble. Then what mess? Look, Toby, I said, Carmela's may not even get any money. If we take Willie back now, we probably won't get anything. But if we wait much longer, well, I don't know. What'll happen if we wait much longer, Toby said. Georgina, is Carmela going to call the police? No. But what if she does? So? So we might get arrested. We're kidnappers, Toby said. We are not. We are dog nappers then. Toby's face was puckering up like he was going to cry. And if we have to go to jail, he said, shut up, Toby. There's no such thing as dog nappers. I hated it when Toby started thinking up stuff I should have thought of. Maybe we are dog nappers. Maybe we could go to jail. I pictured Willie's face on the milk carton. His head cocked with his ears perked up. Have you seen me? It would be underneath, and Carmela would be sitting there on the kitchen table with her Cheerios, looking at Willie and crying her eyes out. And what about Willie, Toby interrupted my thoughts. Think about him, he said. I bet he's sadder than anything. Shut up, Toby, I said. I shouldn't need Toby heaping up more bad feelings on top of me like that. Neither one of us said another word as we made our way back to the Jackson Road toward the car. Toby kept on finding things on the ground and saying, Hey, look what I found, a quarter, a cigarette lighter, a pencil. Then right before we got to the car, we came to one of those lost dog signs with Willie's cute little face smiling out at us. I shut my eyes until we were all the way past it, but I could feel him looking at me. When we finally saw the car, Toby darted ahead. Hey, look at that. He said, pointing to the ground. I looked down and a shiny quarter, quarter nestled in the sandy roadside next to our car. And then I noticed something else. Tracks in the sand. Tire tracks. Bicycle tire tracks. But Toby didn't seem to notice. He just grabbed the quarter like it was made of gold. He shuffled his feet in the sand, making those tire tracks disappear. When I unlocked the door, I climbed in the back seat. Me and Toby stayed in the car all afternoon eating graham crackers and jelly and playing Crazy Eights. Toby kept asking me when we were going to take Willie back to Carmela's, but I didn't even answer him. I knew what was making me him mad as all get out, but too bad. I didn't want to talk about Willie and Carmela. I didn't even want to think about Willie and Carmela. I had this bad bad feeling that I'd gotten myself into a mess and it seemed like everything I did stirred that mess up more, stirred it up so much it was starting to think, to stink, sorry. Isn't that what Mookie said? Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye.